Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to the July 1st uh, meeting of the Revere Conservation Commission. First item on the agenda is roll call. Member Nick Nicholas Malason. Yeah. Member Vincent Lauria. Yeah. Member Ann Rapone. Here. Rapone. Member Here. James Cerboni. Here. And I'm Chair Andrew DeSantis. Uh, Member Vincent Camerata. And Member Joseph Laval are absent. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of June 3rd, 2015? Motion to approve. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing. Notice of intent DEP file number 061-0667-16 Peerview Ave, construction of a single family home. Andrew Burke and Mr. John Ryan, I believe, is going to state your uh, name and address uh, uh, at the is, mic. Uh, Speak uh, into the is, mic. Yep, I, sorry. Uh, my name is John Ryan. My address is 76 Canal Street, Suite 302, Boston 02114. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, this, this project that we're proposing is a simple takedown of an existing single family uh, structure and uh, the uh, construction of a new structure. We're here uh, before you, obviously, you know, because we, the project exists within a, uh, within a flood zone. And that's essentially the, um, the extent of Okay, the I was remiss in not having a motion to open the public hearing, so let's have a motion to open the public hearing. I'll motion. Do I have a second? I second I'll it. second. Second by Nick. All those in favor? The opposed? Aye. Vote in the affirmative. Okay, so any questions uh, for Mr. Ryan? I've got a revised uh, plan. There's a plan that uh, was set in your package was of the existing structure. So I'd like Mr. Ryan to explain. Constructed. I do have one set of plans. If anybody wanted to look at the plans with breakaway walls on it, Mr. Chairman, would you like me to supply a set of plans to each member? If you can, yes. Can. Yes, certainly. The difference between this project and projects we usually see, this project is in a velocity zone. Most of the projects we see are in uh, land subject to coastal storm flowage, but this is not. So requirements are a little bit different. So I think. Uh, the elevation is going to be uh, at 16.5 feet, point five as shown on the plan I just handed out, and it's going to have breakaway walls. And uh, Mr. Ryan, would you explain how those are going to work? Well, uh, breakaway walls are, are, uh, is a foundation system designed to accommodate the flow of water underneath the structure. And uh, so if you have a, a velocity of water coming over the top of a sea wall or coming from the ocean, the uh, object of, of, a, of a breakaway wall is that it will take away the panels and therefore release the pressure uh, through specific channels underneath the structure, whereas if those walls did not exist and those panels were solid, uh, you might be looking at some serious structural damage to the, to the building itself. Uh, it's essentially a, a form of uh, stress relief. And where are those located on the drawings, if you uh, want? They should be with the structural plans, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, just, uh, I hope I didn't give you an incomplete set. But you see they're shown as essentially uh, they're wooden pilings. Uh, so the, the, the actual support um, uh, points of the, of the foundation are wooden pilings, which differs from your average con uh, concrete uh, uh, foundation wall where the structure, the entire length of the wall bears the structure of the, of the building above it. In this particular system, 
the uh, pilings themselves the, are, the, are the particular structural members that, con that take the, the pressure at those particular points. Uh, the breakaway walls in between are non-load bearing. They're merely panels. So as I look at uh, S1.2, it shows a section through the breakaway wall right in the bottom middle of the page. So the floor you're showing is the finished floor on the interior? Oh, yeah, it says one, two. Right, so... Yeah, it's a little confusing to me looking at this. Right, so if you look at the... Um, I would say if you start at the, at the top left-hand corner at that um, uh, plan view, you'll see that uh, you have your round piling, your, your round wooden piling with a two-inch wall framing around that pile. The actual circular pile itself is what's uh, taking the, the weight of the structure. And then, as you say, if you look at the bottom and you look at that section through, you'll see that um, it's a, a wooden pile again going down. And you have uh, clips essentially attached to those wooden piles for the purposes of connecting uh, the top plate, the bottom plate, and the studs to that particular uh, structural system. You don't hit the grade 16.5 until you're almost at the top of that section, John, right? Uh, the, obviously, the requirement is that the underside of any structural element be at 16 feet or higher, so that the intention will be that no structural element will go below the, the elevation of 16 feet. And that's why we actually gave ourselves another, 16, another six inches so that there be, we wouldn't have any issues. We wanted to clear it by six inches and leave it at that. But you, you've got uh, a uh, floor underneath the first living floor, essentially, right? But it can't be an occupiable space. Right. No, that's, that, that is not going to be a livable space down there. And uh, anywhere, any structure where breakaway walls are used, uh, the presumption is that the, the spaces between the breakaway walls are non-livable. Uh, okay. Definitely not going to be putting down carpet if it's going to be washed away by water at a later time, you know. So, it's, no, it's, uh, no it's, it's essentially uh, almost considered exterior for, for all intents and purposes. Almost considered like what? Exterior. For, in that the presumption is that water may flow through there someday. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Anybody from the audience? Any questions on this uh, project, Tony? Okay, I've prepared an order of conditions. So if we'll have a motion to close the public hearing and issue the order, I'll entertain that. I'll Any motion to close and issue an order of conditions. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Did I hear an opposition or no. uh, was that no. delayed? Did I? It was a delayed. Okay, very good. Okay, we'll sign this tonight. And as soon as the uh, official uh, DP file number comes out, I'll copy it to them and uh, send it to uh, Andy Burke. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, okay. members of the board. Next item on the agenda 
is a public hearing for a notice of net DEP file number 06106641140 Lee Burbank Highway Improvement Dredging uh, by uh, Glo at the Global Revere Bulk Fuel Storage Terminal. Thank you. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? I'll motion to open. I'll by second. Maria. I'll second. And second by member and Raponi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Mr. Welch. Hello, my name is Robert Welch. Uh, I'm an engineer with Childs Engineering Corporation. We were hired by global companies to uh, do the permitting and design plans for the dredging of their fuel terminal in the Chelsea River. Uh, the, uh, the terminal is used for uh, oil tankers and oil barges to berth and then load petroleum products into their adjacent tank farm. Uh, so the proposed project is to do improvement dredging to deepen the draft of the berth uh, due to the fact that they've widened uh, some of the bridges on the Chelsea River and they have plans to deepen the dredge depth of the federal channel in the Chelsea River. So Global wants to uh, dredge the berth down to minus 38 mean low water in order to bring in uh, larger sized tankers with a deeper draft. Uh, so that's the, that's the reason for the proposed dredging. Any questions for Mr. Welch? I did receive a comments letter from Division of Marine Fisheries. Uh, no water, in water or soap production activities shall be conducted from February 15th through June 30th to protect the winter flounder spawning and juvenile development and rainbow smelt American eel migratory passage or from May 1st to September 30th for the protection of the spawning shellfish. Total recommended time of year restriction is therefore February 15th, September 30th, any year. Uh, second comment, the proponents should clarify what will be done to minimize the impacts of suspended sediments if the hydraulic excavator is used. Third comment, is all work should be conducted from upland whenever possible. Barges or boats, if used, should be prevented from grounding during all tides. I've included those in the order. Uh, I just received that letter today, but I, I can include that in the order, yes. Yeah, so it's in the order. Uh, yes. So that way uh, there should be no objection to uh, your activities. Yeah, yeah I think I... We just have to provide a response, I believe, to the uh, second comment. Where they're asking what our measures will be for uh, mechanical or uh, hydraulic dredging if we have to do that. Yeah, I had written the uh, conditions such that you'd have to submit to uh, conservation for approval. Okay. So if you just submit something to me, and, uh, okay. you know, as long as it's reasonable, uh, you'll get your approval. That'll likely be a, dread, a debris boom and a silt curtain down to the mud line that'll surround the activities at all, at all times and that'll keep any suspended materials within that, inside that. Okay, if you just send me an email on that yep. button. Yep. Seeing no questions, so questions. So uh, that, members those of the conditions bond. are all acceptable to the proponent, the work and water window, yes. as well as the uh, sediment requirements. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Can I'll make a motion order? to close. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. You may as well stay up there, Bob. The next one is a public hearing for DEP file 061-0665. Again, for Globe Oil, and this is repairs to 19 steel piles supporting two breasting golfins at uh, Global Revere Bulk st Fuel Storage Terminal. Do I have a motion to open? A motion to open the hearing. I'll second it. Nick Malaysen, and seconded by Vin Laria. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Voted. Okay. We did the determination of applicability for this. Uh, 
but if you just want to go over it again uh, quickly. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Welch? Yeah. How, what is the process for the um, stockpiling of the dredge material? So it's, some of it's going to go as landfill cover, and then um, a portion of it may go as to a hazardous materials landfill. And yeah. so there'll be sampling of the stockpile after it's stockpiled in right. T water. Is that that's prior to adding the lime? Anybody else? So I've written an order of conditions. I also had a correspondence from Marine uh, Fisheries on this. Uh, they had uh, one comment, the proposed project will have minimal impact on fisheries resources due to the location, extent of the work. This is the uh, dolphin and uh, pier repair. And thus have no fisheries uh, resource concerns. We concur the work should be contained with bottom weighted silk curtains or other methods of containment to prevent any debris from reaching adjacent habitats, as mentioned in the NOI. This is something you brought up, uh, James, the last time somebody was up here for something similar. So that is in the order, too. So if no other questions, I have a motion to uh, close and issue an order. I'll close and issue an order. I'll second. second. 
Who was that, Nick? Vinny. Vinny. Okay. I'll, I'll get the voices straight eventually. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Vote it. Okay. I'll get a copy, and you should have it sometime early next week because your file number has already been issued. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. That was Vinny. <laughs> okay. I, I started to write, write uh, Nick. All those in favor? Aye. Voted to adjourn at 4.35 p.m. <laughs>